Mando Bug here with the third week of our Ripple As You Go cat. So this week we're going to be learning how to do the ripple stitch of the body. It's a very fun pattern but you do have to pay attention so make sure you've downloaded the most recent version of the pattern and have that next to you as I show you how to work that ripple stitch. To start the ripple body you're going to need to chain 366 stitches. So I'm just going to do two repeats for the sake of demonstration. So I'm only going to be chaining 42, but you will need to chain 366. So once you've completed your 366 chains, it's time to do a treble crochet into the sixth chain from your hook. So to do a treble crochet, you're gonna yarn over twice, Find that sixth, sixth chain from your hook. So one, two, three, four, five, six. You're going to insert your hook into that chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, and you may need to twist your work a little bit like that to see all of your loops. But you're gonna yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two more, and yarn over and pull through the last two. So we yarn over and pull through two three times. So that's why this is called a treble, sometimes called a triple crochet. So you're going to chain one and then work another treble into that sixth, sixth chain. So we're gonna yarn over twice, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop. You're gonna yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. And then we're gonna do that one more time. Chain one, and a treble into that same space. So you kind of have this cluster of stitches here all in the same space. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna skip two chains and work a treble in the next chain. So yarn over twice, And you're going to do that a total of five times. So skip two chains and work your treble into the next. So once you've done that five times, your piece should look like this. You should have your cluster of treble chain ones in your first piece here which is that sixth chain from your first hook because that first those first chain five four of them count as a treble and one of them counts as a chain one so that's what you're seeing here and then you have your skip two treble 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 so now we're going to be working another one of these clusters so you're going to skip two and work a treble in the next And then you're gonna do a chain one, another treble in the same space, chain one, another treble in the same space, chain one, another treble in the same space. Sorry, I gotta get some more yarn here. And what that should look like is this. Now you can see my chain here that I worked into has been pulled into a real loose open circle. And that's okay, that happens sometimes um, from the pressure and the tension of crocheting and it will easily block out. So now the next step is to put another one of these clusters in the stitch right next to it. So we're gonna do a treble. Chain one, treble. Chain one, treble. 
chain one, treble. So this is what your piece should look like at this point. And you can see where you were skipping and doing trebles. It's kind of gathered your piece and where you've been working treble chain ones into the same spaces, it's kind of fanning it out. And this is what's gonna give us that ripple body. So you repeat the pattern till the end of your row. So once you complete your two clusters next to each other, you're gonna skip to treble five times again. So skip to treble. So I just did the five skip two trebles to gather my piece. Now for you, you're gonna continue on. You're gonna do this section again where you do the treble chain one, treble chain one, treble chain one, treble chain one in the same space, and then the same thing in the next space, in the next chain next to it. So you're gonna repeat that section, alternated with that section till the end of your row. And so then you'll be at a point where I am where you have completed your, um, skip two chains treble five times and you'll see that I have three chains left. So in that last chain space you're just going to work that first cluster. The treble chain one, treble chain one, treble chain one, treble. So for the ripple body, we're just gonna be repeating two rows. We're going to be doing a row of this ripple stitch pattern. And then the second row is just single crochets in each stitch across. So once you get to the end of your row, your first row, to get ready for the second row, you're gonna chain one and turn, and you're gonna work a single crochet into each stitch. So what that means is the treble, gets a single crochet, and that chain one gets a single crochet. So every treble and every chain gets a single crochet worked into it until the end of the row. This part um, I found is a little tricky, so you may want to stop and check yourself every now and then just to make sure that you didn't miss any chains or work any extra single crochets because you have the chains in between those clusters that you've created but when you get to the kind of decrease section there are no chains in between you're just working straight into trebles. So right here I've gotten to a cluster, so I worked in a treble, now in a chain, in a treble, in the next chain. And then right where those two clusters touch each other, there's just two trebles next to each other. There's not a chain in between them. So you'll want to be careful not to make an extra single crochet in that spot. Now when you get to the end of your row, it's gonna look something like this. Now remember I mentioned that that beginning chain five, four of the chains counted as a treble and one of them counts as a chain. So you're gonna to wanna to work into two of those. So this is my last treble. And this is my beginning chain five that we skipped to work into that sixth chain space. So we're gonna to wanna to work a single crochet into two of those chains that one that counts as a chain one, and that one that counts as the top of the chain four, which is what counts as our treble. So when you get to the end of your row, it should look something like this. And I found that single crochet row really gives some stability to the body of your piece, and it makes it easier when you come, when it comes time to do that ripple pattern again. Now row three starts a little differently than the very first ripple row because we're not working off of a foundation chain. What you're going to do is you're going to um, be working chain four to count as a treble and then a chain one to count as your first chain one. 
and then you'll just continue on with that ripple pattern, making sure your clusters are a total of four trebles with chain one spaces in between them. Working just one cluster on the ends and two next to each other in the body of the shawl. As I mentioned earlier, it is a little tricky when you work the single crochet row to make sure you're getting your stitches in the right spots. And one way you'll know if you did it correctly is if your ripple is lining up on top of its previous ripple. You can see the cluster is sitting on top of that bottom cluster. And then when it comes time for your skip to trebles, there's five of them and that's the center should match with the center of the one below. When you get ready to work your clusters again, it should sit at the top of the cluster below you. So there's a cluster here as our treble chain one with the four trebles with the chain ones in between. The new one sits right on top of that last treble. That's where you want your stitches to be aligning. If you find that you're off, you may rip back and fix your single crochet row, or you may want to fudge it a little bit, meaning skip an extra single crochet to make sure that lines up, or instead of skipping two, only skip one, depending on um, where your mistake lies. This is a pretty forgiving pattern because it is so lacy and ripply that mistakes aren't as noticeable, but you do wanna try to make sure that the ripples are lining up. So continue on working that ripple stitch pattern for the indicated length for your piece. It's just that total of four rows for the small scarf and it's a total of nine repeat rows for that larger stole. So once you finish that, you guys will be ready to move on to week four where we're gonna be connecting the body ripple stitch to our join motifs. That's where the magic happens. I can't wait to show you next week. In the meantime, make sure you stop by in our Ravelry group, share pictures of your progress. We wanna see how your piece is working up. If you're having any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me there as well. I will be in the group active, ready to respond. So until then, I will see you guys next week for our final week of this cat.